What's going on YouTube? Kurt F7 here for a squad report and it's something a bit different. Now today I can't have a career mode episode up for you guys. I apologize, I've got the 7 show as well. But don't worry, don't stress. These are for the fans who are hardcore into their career mode like me. Pretty much a behind the scenes look of career mode. So I've decided to make this video separate just for you guys because I love seeing it, this stuff too. So uh, let's check out the squad report. Now first thing guys, a lot of people don't like seeing all this stuff in the career mode episodes. That's why I don't put them in in my major episodes but probably every now and again I probably will make another episode like this outside of my main career mode just showing you more updates on this squad report but anyways lads we got De Gea in goals he hasn't gone up overall yet but look at his physical stats they've all gone up and lads let's be real this guy's got really high potential I hope he can reach high 80s by the end of this career mode uh, even pushing for not pushing for 90 I'll be wrapped with that Raphael Mate, he's homesick. Remember, we got that email a few episodes ago. Um, bit sh I'm a bit shattered about that because I reckon he's got pot the potential to get to like mid-80s. He's a fantastic right back. I don't want another right back. I want Raphael as my number one. I think he's fantastic. Phil Jones. I'm a big fan of Phil Jones. He's just always injury prone in real life. In the game, not too bad. He's a bit of a boss. Man, he's got the potential to be like a John Terry-like defender. So, as you can see there, all his technical abilities have gone up and he's one up overall. Marcus Rojo, again, a uh, bit different to Phil Jones. Uh, his uh, individual stats haven't gone up that much, but he's gone up by uh, one overall already. On to Luke Shaw. Now, he's an interesting one. He's got really high potential in the mid-80s as well. But um, it, I, I heard it's a slow grind with uh, uh, Luke Shaw, but it was last year for FIFA 14. If you remember my uh, Manchester United career mode the last season, we got him then, and it's a slow grind ag uh, again. But as you can see, guys, all of his technical stats and his mental stats have all gone up, so I got high hopes for Luke Shaw. And uh, Herrera, he's gone up by uh, his overall by one. Uh, his technical abilities have all gone up, but look at his ball control. It's gone up by three. 90 ball control now from Ander Herrera. That's fantastic. Daily Blind's gone up as well. Again, his technical abilities have all gone up. His free kick accuracy has gone up by three. How does that work? He hasn't even taken one free kick for me. Don't ask me how. But anyways, Wayne Rooney's gone up by one. He's back to 87 as he was on FIFA 14. As you can see there, his dribbling's gone up and long shots. Uh, not that much, but he is 29. So I was expecting him to decline a little bit, but he hasn't. He's gone up, so uh, happy days. Adnan Yanaze. This kid is immense. You saw the hat-trick he scored for me the other day. His form's excellent. His morale's happy. He's only gone up by one. I'm not complaining. Uh, still early days. This career mode is going to be very, very long. So uh, I'm happy, Adnan. Hopefully, he can uh, reach like De Gea. He can push for that overall 90. That's that's the that's the standard I've set for Adnan. Next player is Radamel Falcao. He's gone up by one already. 89. It's gone up from 88. But as you can see, guys, ball control's gone up by... Uh, two there and volley's up by three so technical ability has gone up he's at the age of 28 so hopefully hopefully maybe he can reach 90. all right next player guys is angel de maria now this is a player who i would love to reach 90. he's got the capabilities to do so look at those technical uh stats there they've all gone up they're just dramatic shot power 90 now Crossing 93, this man is a beast. Next player is Robert Van Persie. Now, the one player who I thought was going to decline really quickly in his career mode is Robert Van Persie. No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Form, excellent. Morale, happy. 89, up overall. Um, he's 31 years of old. Man, I'm not complaining whatsoever. Johnny Evans, now he's a man I'm not too fond of. He's unhappy. I'm not really playing him. Form, okay. I think I've played him. How many times have I played him? Oh, there you go. I haven't played him at all. I thought I at least gave him one game. To be honest, I'm, I'm, I prefer to give games to like uh, Chris Smalling and Tyler Blackett than Johnny Evans because Blackett's a player that we can bring through the, uh, the system. Johnny Evans, get your comments down below. What should we do with Johnny Evans, guys? Antonio Valencia, he's another player that I haven't played too much. Uh, let's see here. We've played him four times this game. He's 29 years of age, guys. Uh, our wingers, we've got Adnan now. Uh, Adnan Yenizé, we've got Di Maria. We've got Zaha. We've got uh, Nani to come back on loan as well. Get your comments down below, guys. What should we do with Antonio Valencia? Sell him, keep him. I'm not too sure, guys. Ashley Young is in the exact same boat, and he's decreasing because have we even played him? We've played one game with Ashley Young. Uh, his, his morale's content. His form's okay. Um, another player, guys, like Valencia, like Evans, get your comments down below. I think we've got to sell him, guys, personally. But like I said, guys, this is our career mode. If you guys want him and I want to keep him, 
you know? I'm sorry, if I want to get rid of him, you guys want to keep him? We'll keep him. Jesse Lingard, I've been playing this guy a fair bit lately. As you can see there, four games already into this season. Um, mate, he's gone up by one overall. He's very happy. And look at those technical stats all the way up. Tom Thorpe, he's a player that I haven't used whatsoever. But he's gone up by one. He's only, he's only young, 21. Tyler Blackett. Now, this kid, I've played that four times as well. Got big raps on this kid in real life and in this game. I want to play him a whole lot more. As you can see, he's gone up by one overall. I want to get him, try at least push him to the 80s. That's pushing it, but hopefully we can. Next player is Will Keane. These players, we haven't even been playing, lads. Probably just one in the uh, Capital One Cup. Uh, one Mata down the bottom here. He's gone up by one overall. As you can see, we've played 11 games with him. He scored some goals. He's got some uh, assists already. He's morale's happy. He's worth 80, uh, 38 million. That's a lot of money there. Like I said, guys, he's 26. For him, he's going to go up and up and up. Hopefully, we can get into in the 88 mark. I hope so, anyways. All right, next player is Mario Fellaini. Now, this is another one, guys. Get your comments down below. He feels threatened, is morale. What should we do with him? I've played him a few games. Look, we've played five games with him so far. I'm not too sure about Fellaini. I'm really sitting on the fence with this one. Uh, I don't know whether to keep him, to sell him. I'm like 50-50, right on that line. Um, get your comments down below. This decision is going to be up to you guys. Next player is Andres Lindegaard. I don't know. I've just got no feelings about Andres Lindegaard. Our right, next player, we've got Michael Carrick. I'm not too sure what to do with Michael Carrick. Um, I've given a few games. Look, four games and he's decreasing so far, which is crazy. Um, he's 33 years of age now, guys. Maybe it is time we sell him. Uh, get your comments down below. Um, next player is Joe Rothwell. Haven't even been playing him. I think I've given him one game. Uh, he's going up. Another player, Pereira. He looked good. Uh, I don't mind using this guy. He's gone up one by overall as well. Got big hopes on him in real life. Uh, next player is Chris Smalling. I've given him a few games. Got to give him a few more. Um, he's got the potential to get to low 80s as well. I wouldn't mind playing Chris Smalling a lot. You know, He's, he's, he's half decent in the game. Uh, he's got good pace about him. Next player is Ben Amos. Another goalkeeper that we never use. Uh, Anderson. His stats are going up. He's 26. We don't even play him. But we haven't even played him yet this season. Another player I reckon we should sell. Uh, next player is Darren Fletcher. I don't think we've played him yet. We haven't played Fletcher either this season. Uh, maybe we should sell him. Again, like um, like Fellaini, I'm 50-50 about this one. Nani, I want to bring him back on loan personally. I've got big raps on him. But, you know, he, his career stagnated a bit. But he's killing it in real life for sporting at the minute. But uh, I'm not too sure what to do about him. Uh, look at those technical stats. They've all gone up, you know. So um, get your comments down below. What to do with Nani? That's an interesting one. Javier Hernandez is a big fan favorite. Should we keep him? Should we sell him? I'm not too sure, guys. Comments down below. Tom Cleverly. That's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. He's, uh, you can see his technical stats are going up there. Um, Wilfred Zaha. Yes, yes, yes. Bringing him back. He's only 21, guys. Look at those stats, all of those stats, the physical, mental, technical uh, stats have all gone up. He's bad form, don't ask me why. Uh, he's on loan to Crystal Palace, uh, morale content, I want to bring him back, stick him on the wing. That's why I don't want players like Valencia and Ashley Young. I want to give go. I got. I want to give guys like Wilfred Zaha a go on the wing. Nicky Powell, another one that I want to bring back into the fold. We've got Michael Keane there on loan. Uh, Varela. We've got Reese James Vermal and James Wilson. Got big raps on this kid. He's gone up by two overall now. So uh, I think he gets to the uh, low 80s as well. That would be fantastic. Sam Johnston. I probably won't even use him. And uh, that's it, guys. Uh, that's it for the squad report. Let's go uh, look at a bit more in depth with this career mode. Now, another new feature they got for FIFA 15 in this career mode is the squad ranking. They rank your players who are the best players at your club. And as you can see there, they rate Radamel Falcao, the best player at our club. Robin Van Persie, second. He's jumped Wayne Rooney from... Uh, uh, from third position there. And look, as you can see, look, Wamata and Galdi Maria. That's an interesting one. Have a look at Daily Blind. He's really risen. He's jumped everyone there. But uh, nothing too surprising there as we jot down the list. Uh, Maran Fellaini is a bit too far down from the list. That's a bit concerning, isn't it? Darren Fletcher there. Nothing too uh, out of the ordinary with that list there. But uh, let's talk about tactics. I'm pretty sure you guys will be interested in my tactics when I play career mode. Now, another new feature that EA Sports have implemented into FIFA 15 
is the team sheets. Now, as you can see, you can create six of them. I've got four at the minute. So these are pretty good features. You can have different squads for different games. So just say you know, your Champions League squad, your, your Premier League squad, you know, your Carling Cup squad, your FA Cup squad. It's pretty cool features. I pretty much got, here, yeah, I'll show you mine now. I've got a 4-4-2 formation with a diamond in midfield. You guys have probably seen that. I use that a lot when we play at home. I like the two strikers up front. We're going to be attacking at home. But when we play away, I tend to go 4-3-3. I think it's good for us. Uh, it's a bit on the defensive-minded with the two central uh, midfielders there. Just, just It gives us balance when we're away because the other teams are going to be attacking a bit more. So they're predominantly the two I use the most. But let's go check out the 4-3-3 because this is the one that I like the most. So let's take a look at the instructions I give for every player in this 4-3-3 formation. Radamel Falcao, let's take a look. Defensively, I just want him to be basic and nothing special there. Uh, support runs, I want him to stay central. He's the man up top. Uh, man up top. I don't want him drifting wide or anything. He needs to be central for me. And I want him to get in behind so we can you know, get Rooney or one matter Di Maria, just to play these through balls into him. Get in behind, whether it be over the top or just a normal through ball. Want him to get in behind. Uh, next player is Di Maria. Now, Di Maria, basic defending as well. We don't... These guys are playing up top. We don't care about the defense. Uh, but I want him to be balanced. I don't want him to cut inside or stay wide. I want him to be balanced. Drift in, drift out. I want him to be uh, just just balanced is the, probably the correct word to use. As you can see here, yeah, balanced again. I don't want him to get in behind. I don't want him to come too far short. Just balance. And that's the same with Adnan Yenizai. Exactly the same. Wayne Rooney in the cam there, as you can see there. On the crosses, I want him just to be default. I don't want him to go too far forward into the box and then it leaves us exposed at the back. I don't want him to get uh, stay too far back because he could get a chance. I want him to be balanced on the edge of the box there. And positioning, guys, I want to give him free roam, uh, Wayne Rooney, because he's the type of player that can defend, he can go and attack, he can go and chase balls. He's the best player in free roam, in my opinion. Alright guys, now the two central midfielders there, we want them to be balanced. Now as we can see here, their positioning freedom, we don't want them to free roam at all. No, 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 they have to stick to their position because they need to cover the defense. If they go free roaming and push too far forward, they'll leave us exposed. We don't have the de uh, best defense as it is, they need to stick to their position. And that's the exact same goes with Ander Herrera. Whoever plays in that position, they have to stick to their position. Now, when it comes to the fullback guys, I don't have them always overlapping the runs just because our defense isn't good enough to uh, cope with that. We got Rojo and Jones, you know, they're not Matt Hummels and Thiago Silva, are they? You know, our defense is not the best, so I don't always have them overlapping and I don't always have him staying back. I just have him balanced. I reckon that's the, just the right key for the fullbacks for us, guys. Now, with the center halves, um, have a look at this. You can play as a striker with the center halves when they're, look, go up front in the last few minutes of the match, if losing. Mate, I've just got that just for Rojo, because apparently Rojo for Sporting used to score a lot of goals, so I think like in the 85th minute, if you're losing, just go for it, you know? I don't have that with both center halves. I've just got that with Rojo. Keep one back in Phil James, uh, Jones. Look, stay back while attacking. And Rojo, he can push up forward when we're losing when there's five minutes to go. So uh, that's it for pretty much uh, the instructions. Uh, let's talk tactics. Now, tactics, guys, you can play on default, you know, counter-attacking, high pressure, possession, long ball. But I've got mine custom tactics. I've made these for myself. Let's take a look what I've got here. The build-up play between the speed of the passing, or the speed in just general with the players, and the passing, 50-50. I don't want it to be too slow. I don't want it to be too quick. And I want it to be organized. I think 50-50 is spot on. Now, chance creation. I've got passing 40% because I want players to have that. I don't want to play too ticky tacker, but I don't want to be playing long balls either. I want to be playing a bit more safer than half. That's why I got it on 40%. Crossing, I don't cross the ball too, too much. It's 40%. It's not too low, but it's not high either. I think that's about right. And shooting's on 40% as well because I don't just blast the ball from anywhere. 40% is about right, uh, about right for us. And positioning, it's organized. I don't have everyone free roamed. It's definitely, definitely organized. Now, in defense, guys, we've got the pressure. It's just 55. It's a little bit over half because when we don't have the ball, it's just the pressure. Just get that little bit more momentum on the players cutting each player out with the ball the aggression as you can see look the team's approach with tackling the ball possessor 60 percent so when we don't have the ball 
that pressure is full on. We just got to go and put pressure, get closer. Don't give the opposition too much space. Same with the team width. We don't want to be too central because then we've got no width. And we don't want to be too wide because we're going to be exposed down the middle. So again, we're not going to put the offside trap. We're going to do with the cover. I think that's really balanced for us, guys. And uh, that's pretty much it for the tactics. All right, let's check out the roles now. Obviously, Wayne Rooney's captain. No one's changing that whatsoever. The short free kick, Rooney is a really good free kick taker in real life. He's not too bad. Di Maria taking the right side of the... Um, the free kicks, oh yeah, Rooney on the left side. Uh, the longer free kicks, uh, Di Maria. We all saw that uh, goal from Queen's Park Rangers. He's got a good free kick on him. Penalties, we're going to change that to Radamel Falcao. If you ever saw him in his days at Monaco and uh, Atletico, this guy can take a penalty, my word. But anyways, corners, guys, we've got Rooney and Di Maria. Now, when it comes to the GTN, the Global Transfer Network, guys, uh, I like to use this to buy the players that we need. As you can see right there, we need a center back. I've got a promising, that means pretty much young, up and coming talent. Uh, he's got to be first team quality and he's got to be strong. That is the range that I want. Look, 16 to a 50 year old. I'm not too, I don't really care about the age because he needs to be first team quality. Um, we've already got young players in Rojo, Jones, Smalling, Blackett. You know, we need an experienced defender, first team quality. Um, that's what I got for my center back. Now, when it comes to the central midfield, uh, first team quality as well, because I think if um, we're going to sell players like Carrick, Fletcher, Cleverly, maybe Fellaini, um, we're going to need some uh, replacements, and we need definitely first team quality, because if Andy Herrera and Daly Blind was to get injured, we would be screwed. So we need first team quality. He's got to be a playmaker, and he's got to be a box to box. Ideally, a player like a two over Dell. You know, it would have been perfect for us. But as you can see there, range, I'm not too, I don't really care there. Um, like I said, guys, he doesn't have to be a young, up and coming player. Uh, and I've got a third instruction, guys. Any player, because I've got any position, always, I always put this in my GTN. Any player, any position, he's got to be young. Look at that, 16 to 23. I don't care about his uh, contract, but he has to be promising, an up and coming player. Basically, I would love the next Messi or Ronaldo in any position there. So that's why I always got it on any position. Now, at the GTN, guys, the actual scouts that I've got scouting, uh, i got five scouts at the minute, and we're scouting England, Germany, it's uh, Italy, and we just sent two out right now to Spain and France as well. So uh, they're the areas that we're covering for the uh, GTN. Now, one thing I want to talk to you guys as well is the youth staff. Now, we can set up the youth stuff where we can go and buy players who are going to come through the ranks, but I want to do that further on in this career mode. Probably not in the, the first, you know, two or three seasons. Definitely further on in this career mode. Uh, get your comments down below, guys. Would you like to see me use the youth stuff where I can buy and find these young, uh, youngsters and uh, hopefully they turn out to be like Messi or Ronaldo? Some people don't like them because they're made up players, but other people do like it because it's, it's a career mode and, you know, in career mode, uh, you know, it's about finding players and, and developing them and turning into superstars, you know. So, uh, they'll be, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts about that. So, there you go. There you have it, guys. A little bit of a behind the scenes of my career mode. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope you enjoyed the squad report. I'll be definitely reading the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed this kind of episode and you want me to do more of these more often uh just let me know just you know write in the comments down below but until then guys if you want to chat to me follow me see what i'm doing keeping up to date with me follow me on facebook and on twitter the link is in the description but until then lads like this video subscribe to my youtube channel our youtube channel uh, all these good wonderful things and make sure you stay tuned till tomorrow lads career mode will be back don't you worry about that we've got them we've got the manchester derby that's going to be massive and a few good episodes coming up as well. I'm working on that Road to Glory series as well. It's going to be awesome. But until then, lads, I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care and peace.